hood. <laughs> her hood's on. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, that's gonna go up. That was a long hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> Candles all along oh, the sideline. Yeah. yeah, there's some. Oh, we have a blackout game. Oh, someone's getting sacrificed. Oh, or something. <laughs> <laughs> Something's getting sacrificed. And I'm like, man, this is literally like this is the city life. Like, oh yeah. This is not happening in the suburbs. You might get a couple of fireworks, and people are like, "All right, all right, turn it down. We're trying to sleep." But but in the city of Toronto, it's just different. Yeah, no, Toronto, and it's a lot. I mean, I I wish I could have got there for the Raptors championship like that. Oh yeah, yeah, it was, I'm, it was a, different. I'm one of the biggest Raptors fans, um, self-proclaimed. So I mean, whatever that means. But uh, that would have been fun to be a part of. But you're right. It's like you just have to you have to want to be there in that part of your life to yeah. like to experience that. Like my yeah. friends that live there, it's like. It's a great experience when they're there, when you know what there. I mean? But it's like, like you said, you can't just, you don't just go for walks. No, you, you're you, going for something. Yeah, you don't wake up on a Saturday and be like, oh, let's just like walk the dog and like maybe end up on a trail. And then you're like, we're here, we're going to brunch. <laughs> yeah. And then our friends are coming in from XYZ and we're going this place for dinner. And then after dinner, it's a pre-drink here. And then we have guest list here. And Verbatim. $800 later, you're not lying. You're like, oh, yeah, Sunday. Like, oh, oh, Lord, I'm Whereas sure. in Ottawa, you mm -hmm. can do things for free, mm -hmm. like walking the river. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you're not paying the three grand for rent for, for a box. Don't talk about either place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that does make Ottawa number one, for That's sure. Because BC is, or Vancouver. Yeah. Yeah, That's I did not live anywhere near the city in Vancouver. Were you out in uh, Surrey? Surrey, yeah. first year, rookie mm -hmm. year, right there in Surrey. Good experience, definitely good experience <laughs> being in Surrey. Then the second year, I was in Burnaby with um, Jovan. Yep. Um, that was pretty cool, being, because it really was, like we lived in the neighborhood. Right. And that's part of, like, why I like, you know, Vancouver, too, because when you, it's still all city, mm -hmm. but all the cities are really neighborhoods, kind of, like, outside of, Van, you know, yeah, yeah, Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I liked Vancouver a lot, because even when you're in the city, it's not the, it's not the same hustle and bustle. No. It's, you're not getting no. the same, like, dudes with briefcases shouldering you to get by, texting, or... Uh, yeah. Although, yeah. I, I do wish that this is completely different and not even Canada anymore, but yeah. when, I, when I was with the Jets, there was a, the weekend when they were all going out to the city, and I was like, I didn't want to deal with the traffic. Because mm. I, I, I'm from Texas, and we get traffic, but New York traffic is a whole Disgusting. different traffic. So I was just like... I'll do it later. Fortunately, I got cut. <laughs> like two, <laughs> two weeks, I was like, I should have went to the city right. one time. Right. But like, that's what I think of because I, it seems like it's in the movies. But I'm like, people actually live that. And I remember when I landed, I was like, that's New York because they see it from this. It looked like a spaceship mm -hmm. that was taken over as aliens. So like, I'm definitely glad you Vancouver. You see the brake lights yeah. lined up next to each other. Yeah. Like Toronto wasn't even that bad. So I was like, all right, I'm, I'm cool with that. Yeah. Like huge cities, that's scary. Yep. Traffic-wise and stuff? Um, what do you mean? Like, the, the Houston scare, you said? Houston? Yeah, is that what you said? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. That's because, like, in Texas, we're different, too. Yeah. We're, we're spoiled, you know? We usually have, like, open space. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Hey, I want to so go to Walmart, big. get there in three minutes. <laughs> but then when I was trapped, you're like, what's going on? Yeah. Like, who are these people? <laughs> Californians, probably. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're definitely spoiled. Like, and that's why it's, like, coming up north, because now I live in Chicago. Well, we lived in Chicago, and mm -hmm. it's a whole different vibe. Like the further up north you get, down south you can do any, things whenever you want, mm -hmm. how you want. Mm -hmm. Up north you like you, you gotta have a plan. Mm -hmm. Gotta have a plan. You said you lived in Chicago. Yeah. So um, these past three years, my fiance, um, she lived, she works in Chicago. Oh, wicked. Yeah. Uh, um, so that's been my past my off season for yeah. the past three years, and um, it's different because. Again, we're, she's from Houston, I'm from D Dallas, basically, yeah. Arlington, yeah. you know, Arlington. And it's like, we went through the winter vortex. Mm. Like, we're texting, and I'm like, we went, we, we did the thing yep. where boil, a hot wa boil some water in the pan, <laughs> went outside when it was negative 16 degrees. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, like, we're both scientists. Like, she's an engineer, I'm an engineer, we're still like, there's no way. <laughs> and then, then this is this is bad or good, bad, whatever. I'll, I'll claim it's my fault. Yep. I'm not gonna say my fiance said to do this or she thought it was gonna work. <laughs> I thought it was gonna work. So we're like, cool. Like you know how people do the um, baby reveals? Yeah, yeah. The gender reveals. Yeah. See where I'm going here? So we got some water. We already did the regular one. I'm like, hey, I have some Gatorade powder. <laughs> Let me put some Gatorade powder and see in if this. It works. And yeah, it's red. Uh huh. It's 
it should just be like red, right? <laughs> First off, so we did it. We both there, like, all right, let's go. I go out there. And I do this. First off, like the wind gusted. Oh, so the, hot, the hot water just, like, and then right immediately after it froze on me. Oh. And then no, it did not go red at all. It was still white. So and then so we tried it again. I was like, put more powder. <laughs> I mean, that's science for you. There's, there's you and your scientific process. Eh? Yeah, and it, it yeah. didn't work. It, 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 didn't even, it wasn't even a hint of red. I, I, like scientifically, I still want to know why it didn't even go red at all. But like, right. it didn't work. I think we needed like dye or something yeah like color dye or something yeah, yeah but yeah. um yeah that didn't work that failed completely that's hilarious what's we she, like yeah what's she doing in chicago i love chicago oh she oh, um God. she she's an engineer and yeah. she worked for um uh exxon mobile yeah, yeah 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 so she um that's what she did environmental engineering okay yeah hey, yeah chicago's a that's serious cool city mm -hmm. very different oh yeah very big and we've seen some crazy things oh my gosh yeah yeah have you been to a bulls game no, I didn't go to any sport. Really? You know, eh? That's the weird thing about me. I think I've been to one, like, professional sporting event. No, I take that back. Okay, one professional sporting event without being part of, like, a professional yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was when I was a little kid. If you got on the A or, a or B honor roll, they would take you to Texas Ranger game. Okay. But, like, my first football game, professional football game, was me playing in it. For Tampa real, Bay. eh? Yeah. You're not interested? No, I just, my, my family being Nigerian, we just, that wasn't like a big part of our culture. Like, right. you, di you didn't go to games. So my first professional game was playing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I was like, is that a bad or a good thing? I mean, I guess I'll take it. It's just a thing. It's, yeah, it's just a yeah. thing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I didn't go to any of the, of the games, but they are definitely big fans in Chicago. Yo, yeah. Their fan base is... Vicious too, though. Yes. Yeah. They, yeah. they, if you, yeah. I, I did a cross country tour after my rookie year, like driving back, so I was in Edmonton. Um, we did, so I did a Milwaukee game. I said cross country as if I did 50 states. I did not. I did, we did a oh, Bucks, yeah. we did a, I don't know, we did a Timberwolves game in Minnesota. Okay. Uh, did a Bulls game um, and then came back and did a Raptors game just like to end the whole, end the whole year. Yeah, I like But that. Chicago was, Chicago was cool, man. I really liked it. And like, I'm a huge, um, blues, like just like blues music fan. So like oh, all the places you can go in Chicago. That's true. I like, went to Kingston Mines. As you know, it's 365 days a year up till, till four in the morning. Yeah, every single every single night. There's two stages. It's like, so I love Chicago for that. Minnesota was also crazy for that. Like, because Minnesota is like a low key music town. Like, I mean, okay, low key. Like They're Prince is from music. there. There's yeah. some, and like they have a uh, one of the biggest um, prove it sort of. Um, bar music bars in history like it's like everyone's played there before and it's so cool they have all their stars oh, yeah, up on yeah, there. Yeah, I see, I see. so like so when but went by there i'm losing the name right now which is an affront to my musicality but uh <laughs> yeah it's uh so that's the one thing that you know a lot of these american places a lot of these american cities i think have for sure over you know the top sort of canadian places is like that blues live music like oh it's there's nothing it's like the history it. yeah it's the history. i'm like i realized like during COVID, i guess like I'm a history junkie. Right. Like I, I don't I love history. Like and Chicago has so much history. Like mm -hmm. there's a boat tour. And it's funny because um during the bye week when my fiance came, we're all like talking about going doing boat tours and like some of the other other teammates are like, yeah. What do you do on a boat tour? I'm like, it's awesome, man. You get to learn about <laughs> history. Like there's so much you can learn. I'm 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 like, I'm sure there's so much history around here. And um like the Chicago one is there's like architectural tours. Yeah. And that, that's super interesting. And probably the biggest fact was why they call it the Windy City. Do you know why they call it the Windy City? No. See, this, this, is, this is something like people from down south, they were like, oh, they call it the Windy City because it's windy. windy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, although it is windy because yeah, yeah. the sky risers and stuff create like a wind tunnel, Tunnels, on, yeah. especially off the lake. Mm -hmm. That is true, but it's called the Windy City basically, long story short, and I'm sure I'm gonna get some of this wrong, but long story short, Chicago, there was a fire. Okay. And you can look it up. There's this fire that was caused by like this farm in the city. Well, remember, it used to probably not be a city, mm -hmm. but it was Chicago. And um, it's like the cow tipped over something. There's this crazy story of like, they know the cow who did it and <laughs> it caused this whole thing. And um, basically, the whole city burned down and something about Basically, like, I don't know, something about that, about the burning yeah. of the city, and that's how they got, like, the Windy City. I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to find it. 
It's right there. I'm trying to find it. <laughs> Does this ring about something about Second City? It's, it, no. It's chick. Oh. This is there's all, a reason. This is all new education. Oh my <laughs> gosh, man! I need to go back on the bo boat tour. But yeah, there it you had go. something to do with the burning down of the city. Oh, maybe I'm confusing this with why they call it like the second city or something like that. Like New York's called something and then they call it the second city and everyone thinks it's because it's second to New York. Oh, but they're like, no, it. it's because the burning down of the city was why they had the, they had the second, yeah. the second Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it also had something to do with like the fire, the, the, I think, the windy right. part. I'm pretty sure. It's also windy. Someone go check me. It's all windy. It's all windy. Yeah. yeah and yeah. you do not want to be there in winter because that lake is horrible. It's so cold. It's so cold. Yeah. It's not worth it. And it freezes over. And it, it looks really cool because mm -hmm. it's like slushes mm -hmm. and then like freezes. Like we were there in like, I, th I think it would have been mid to late November. So I don't, oh. think, I don't think it had frozen yet, Doesn't but it was matter. just November. like cold. Oh yeah, it was just brisk. The definition of brisk, you know, I you're on all the bridges. I do not like, like the cold. Yeah. I do not like the cold. No, that's fair. Are you, uh, I'm trying to think. Toronto's not that bad. So you haven't really had to like play a season in a Canadian, real Canadian city that gets cold. No, only yeah. played what, like when we played Calgary towards like mm -hmm. October, and it's like you guys are just out. <laughs> but like game day is different. Like I'm talking about, like you wake up at six a.m., your alarm goes off, and you have to just like put on your parka just to like get to the facility. You haven't had to experience I don't know that. What a parka is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't okay. Know what a parka is? I think that's a. I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a, a jacket thing. Yeah, it's a jacket, but usually stuffed with some down, some down goose, and and uh, See, there's, there's some yeah fur on it. <laughs> That's how I know it's different because when we moved to Chicago, my fiance is like coworkers and stuff. We're like, all right, it's time to go. Um, what's it called hoodie shopping yeah. or like um jacket shopping? We're like jacket shopping because <laughs> like in Texas, it's like it, it'll be like eighty five sometimes in the December, yeah. like just a day, and you're like, oh, and then the cold days would be like sixty five. You're like waiting for the school bus. Yeah, and you're like, oh, it's so cold, and it's like sixty five, which is nothing. It's what's it? Nothing. What's it today? Like roughly, do you think? Well, I don't know, 70? 70, right? 70 yeah. So 65 is not maybe, cold. Yeah. yeah, it's cold in Texas. In Texas. People in Texas, like hoodies, long sleeves, yeah. snuggle up, and they're like, oh my gosh, the world's coming to an end. Especially when it snows, it's weird. It's only, it only snowed like twice when I was a little kid. See, I don't like the winter at all, but that to me does, does some, and this is probably just my Canadiana, does feel slightly sad. Like it feels like there's like a, at least like at least there's at least something fun about it when you're a kid. Cause right now I, I hate the snow. I'm good without it. Like <laughs> you can keep all that. I hate having muddy boots. My dog goes out. She's all wet. I dry her off. Oh, yeah, I'm like the worst. But when you're a kid, there's like something fun. At least sometimes. Cause you have no responsibility. Exactly. Like you go and play. Yeah. You go out and play schoolyard football at lunch in the winter, and it would be fun. You you go out in a pair of shorts in like negative five degree weather, just running like an idiot. Um, but you wouldn't even be cold because you're just a kid and it you was fun. You wouldn't even be cold, you're right. Yeah, you'd just be living, living your best life. That is true. Being a kid, it was different. Yeah. We were just talking about that the other day with someone else, man. You just never stretched. <laughs> just got out there. You want to race? Yeah, sure. To the fence now. Boom. <laughs> and you're like, oh, nowadays you're like, I got to be smart with this. Let me do a quick little dynamic warm up. Yeah. <laughs> I actually wonder when it changes. Like when did it actually, I'm trying to think right now, now that you said that, like the first time I like took a warm up seriously, realizing that I had to, you know? But I was, I was also sort of a little bit of a coach's pet, like younger, so like yeah, the so coach said like, like do did, warm up, I would like me too, warm me up. Me too, me too. And like part of me thinks that that's why I need to warm up for seven hours before I can do anything <laughs> these days. Cause I'm like, maybe I just started warming up too early <laughs> and tell my body you can only work with this amount of warm up. And now I can't trick it. Because I have friends, even in college, who would like, yeah, a couple toe touches and butt kicks, but it's like, right. pew, pew, and then they're just yeah, gone. They're and they're gone. Like, li very literally how. Maybe that's why we're still playing. That's also a good point. <laughs> Maybe. A, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to give us the benefit of the doubt on that one, because yeah. I definitely did listen to coaches and stuff like that. But I also think it's like a mindset thing. Mm -hmm. Like, we know more. Mm -hmm. When you're a little kid, you didn't know that you could pull a hamstring because you didn't even know what a hamstring was. Right. Yeah, it's uh, blissful ignorance, I think. Right. Yeah. I remember the first time I ran a 40, very first time, seventh grade, Cole Middle School in the spring, so after football. I pulled my groin. Oh, yeah. Didn't know what it was at the time. <laughs> Boom, I ran. I ran a 5'2 something. Yeah. And I'm like, and then at the end, I was like, ah, oh, like, I'm, and I'm like, 
No one checked up on me. Right. Like, no one knew anything. I was just limping for the next month, and no one even knew. I was like, and now, like, looking back, I was like, oh, definitely my abductors. Right. That was what it was. But, yeah. like, stuff like that, you're just like. It just happens. It just happens, and you just yeah. keep going. And, like you said, it's just because when you don't know, you just, you don't know that you're even, like, really. You don't know hurt. the risk. You're just like, yeah, yeah. something doesn't feel good. <laughs> but, like, shoot. I can still run. I'm walking. Run. Yeah, exactly. No, with, without a doubt. Yeah. I feel you there. Hmm. Um. I had another thing I was going to ask you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You showed me the other day and I forget, but I okay. wanted to ask and get the origin story oh, if you know it. Sounds, okay. Texas Tech okay. is how many fingers? Oh, this is a good one for the camera. All right. So Texas Tech is two fingers. Okay. But it's not like this. Because who's like this? This, I think, is Oklahoma State. Right. And they basically stole our idea, and it was just like this. Like, I literally saw that my freshman year when we were like away, because we were like, oh, go on this day. I'm like, <laughs> I look at all my teammates, like, Isn't y'all see what's thing? going on here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, who, who, who stole from who? It's like that thing with the, the Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, and it's like, dude, this is Oklahoma State, I think. Yeah. It might even be this. I think, I feel like it might be. It too. might be this, yeah. but Texas Tech. So it's like the Nike swoosh. Yeah, instead of this. And like, is that like a, that's like a big part of your Guns team. up, suns up. Like, that's like a thing. So like if, you, a, if you saw some, like if a freshman was in there and was like this, like he would get corrected? Yes. Like people Don't would do like, that. People would be like, that's. It has to be this way. And every, it's universal. Saying. If you see someone in tech, which, you know, I wear my tech stuff at yeah. the airport and stuff. They're like, text tech, guns up. That's literally, <laughs> guns up. Just like that, Texas Tech, guns up. <laughs> it literally just like that, like with the same inflection in your voice, it's a language almost, right. it's a language. And I, you know, I want to start a campaign right now, yeah. you and me. We should have a hand signal for an Ottawa to Red Blacks. There's just not, we, We'll yeah. think about it, we'll think about it, we'll give this to the people, we'll, but. Something like maybe like the ax? Like, we need, yeah, yeah, maybe that. That's like, that kind of just looks weird, that kind of looks like Chainsaw? Right. Like a chain. Yeah. We That's need it. Mm-hmm. I hear you though. Because, you know, then you can be out on the streets and you, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> Red <Blacks. laughs> <laughs> <Red Blacks. laughs> How do you I say? I always like Oregon though, right? And you're also getting yeah, really close to Hove. And then like. Which is nothing wrong with that. Illuminati. Shout out to Yeah, I don't know. But about, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, we can figure this out. Maybe by the end of this podcast. We can figure something out. Mm-hmm. R is just like also like a. T- R. R, isn't this R in sign language? I think so. A, B, C, D. Oh, yeah. wow. Um, H. I so if someone's watching this and knows that I'm messing it up, I apologize. My, um, my fiance's um, um, mom is actually a e. ESL. And you are. I, think I'm gonna forget, I think that might be right. I think R. That might and, be right. And B is? B is that, I think. A, B, C, D, I think. Does B? that look good? Is that, is that too much? <laughs> it's definitely too much. <laughs> Sounds like <laughs> <laughs> red lights. Red lights. <laughs> red lights. That was like some secret society. So you said Illuminati. Like, that was like some secret society stuff. Can you imagine like, the whole stadium was like red, black, and then people red, are like, their hoods on? <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, that's gonna go. That was so cool. Long hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> Candles all along the <laughs> sideline. Yeah, there's some. Oh, we have a blackout game. Oh, someone's getting sacrificed. Oh, or something. <laughs> something's getting sacrificed. Maybe it's the cows from Rob. I would. If there we all did that, that'd be so intimidating. Because what if, be if you didn't know what if you didn't know what this meant? Yeah, no, I'd. Leave. You'd be like, are they? What are they doing? Like, is it? Uh, that's yeah. No, that's maybe I'll stay. You did that like. 200 to 300 years ago, you probably would have been tied up and stoned because they would think you're yeah, a witch. witch. Yeah, witch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, There's something ominous about this entire process that's got me a little, got me a little messed up. Um, wow. Yeah. What was the original question? I feel like I didn't answer it. Guns up. Oh, yeah. Guns up. Guns up. But Guns I got up. it now. Yeah, 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 Guns up. It. Guns Kate, up, sons up. Do you think Cade Cunningham's going to do that when he hits threes? The, he's a Texas Tech boy, right? The first overall pick in the NBA? No. I don't think so. I think he was, no? Cade Cunningham? Am I right? We had one, we had a... Um, oh, no, he might have been... That oh, was we, maybe two he was years a, ago. Maybe he was Oklahoma, a cowboy. That would be really, oh, that would be really disrespectful oh if I did that. I, you just mentioned Yikes. Oklahoma State. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Penny, Cunningham was not, no. I, I, I follow our basketball team because they yeah. went to the top two um, mm-hmm. in 2019, which... Right, yeah, no, I think... I was actually on a bracket 
yeah. for the first time in my life on a March Madness bracket. Yeah. And I chose Tech to win it. And they almost did. And I got first place because Tech was chose to be last or right. whatever, and they went all the way and lost to Virginia. Bad, bad, bad call by the referees and stuff like that. Um, it was horrible. I don't even watch basketball. I'm like, what's going on here? Want to know something crazy? What? Did you know that the uh, basketball team for the university down the street, right down there, would probably whip Texas Tech's ass? No, there's no way. Not Texas Tech. I, uh, so Carlton. No, uh, there's our, no way. Our basketball team. I have watched them beat Alabama with Colin Sexton starting. Dismantle, actually. It wasn't even close. Um, they beat Syracuse. They beat Virginia. Um, Kentucky wouldn't come and play them. That's a real thing, by the way. Anybody that's blue. Kentucky went to Toronto and took, the, took Ryerson's, um, take Ryerson's little challenge thing. Went and played. And Ottawa, or sorry, Carlton offered to run the whole tournament here in Ottawa. Everything, get it covered. They wouldn't answer the calls. They wouldn't come. There's a Ringer article on Dave Smart who, who built the basketball program. He's one of the best basketball minds in the world. Every, like, D1 schools have flown him in to try to get him to break down his defense, his offense system, et cetera. None of them can get their guys to, to figure it out because it's that intelligent. Yeah, they, you name off some resumes. They're, right. they're unbelievable. They're literally unbelievable. I actually heard about it. Yeah. MC was talking about like their third stringers. <laughs> for yeah. some reason, she's like, yeah, the third stringers came in at like six, nine. I was like, what the? Yeah, they're, they're ridiculous. They're just the most, they're robots. Literally robots. They like, know what to do for every situation. Oh, Dave is just, I mean, Dave is Dave. Um, he, he actually, terrifyingly enough, took me as a little, thought I was a little fun project for himself or as, as a freshman when I was at Carleton. So uh -huh. when I was at Carleton, it was our first year having a team. So when we were talking about basketball yeah. in the field. Remember yeah, this? Yeah, right. yeah, it was our first year having a team. Yeah. So everyone was a rookie. Um, I like, was supposed to be good at football when I came, sure, whatever. Um, and Dave just wanted, his, his big thing is breaking people and then like rebuilding them. He has a term for it, which I'll explain, but he, uh, like, he's the most terrifying dude, because you know he's won. Like, when, I, when we showed up, I think they won nine of the last 11 national championships. By the time I left, it was 13 of the last 14. Um, they went they four straight. Um, they, uh, yeah, he would like, I remember one day I wore a random college sweater, like just like UCLA or something like that. And she's just, he was just like, well, what school do you go to? I was like, Carl, he's like, are you, are you ashamed to be here? And I was like, what are you talking, like I had no idea what, what he was talking about. And he's like, why the F are you wearing that sweater? And I'm like 18, and like this is the, the first thing Dave has ever said to me. And I was like, what? He's like, you, you're gonna keep wearing that here? And I was like, oh my God, and like took it off and like ran into the locker room. And another time I was like biking on the sideline, missing a drill, because I just like tweaked my hamstring. He comes up behind me and he's like, at Carlton, the, the sideline where you, um, like, you know, where we, where we sit and you mm -hmm. get the bikes and stuff, like the stadium comes like right out next to it. He's just like, you're not feeling too great? And I was like, no, coach, just a little hamstring tweak, yada, yada, yada. And back then we had two, two brothers, Phil and Tommy Scrub, who were incredible. Both played for Canada national team. They both mm -hmm. played uh, overseas and stuff. Um, he's like, oh yeah, Tommy and, Tommy and Phil take a, take a lot of practices off. Um, you know, just to, like, just to make manage their bodies and stuff. And I'm, again, 18 years old, and I'm like, oh, really? And he looks at me, he goes, absolutely effing not. He's like, they would never be that damn soft. He goes, I gotta talk to Steve, don't I? Like our head coach, and I was just like, bike faster. Bike, <laughs> does a stationary bike move, get oh me out of here, gosh. get me out of here. Yeah, but that's what they do, that's how they win. He takes people's confidence, he says. That's the term he uses. Takes people's confidence. So you, you'll like this. So he uh, explained it to us once. He came and talked to our, our whole team. And he was like, when I was like seven or eight years old playing hockey, mm -hmm. my dad was my, you know, my dad would be at every game, yada, yada. I could score four goals, have two assists. We could win by eight. But if I got in that car and my dad was like, you played like crap, then I would be like, oh, I played like crap. And he's like, and the reason was, like, yeah, I was seven or eight, but I didn't own my confidence. Like, somebody else was able to tell me and dictate how I saw myself and how I saw you perform. He's like, so until you're able to, like, know, like, you're so resolute and sure in your responsibilities, your duties, et cetera, for a game, and, like, you play your hardest, yada, 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 like, someone's going to be able to come up to your head coach and be like, that was bullcrap, yada, yada, yada. And if you can, like, in your head, be like, no, that was actually, I executed everything, boom, 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 boom. That's when you own your confidence. It's that ability for someone to not be able to take away sort of your, your self-worth, et cetera. Mm. And he just explicitly tells people, like, tells people, like, oh, yeah, like, I, with young kids, especially the ones who, like, think they're flashy, you know, basketball players, you know, mm -hmm. the hoopers, dudes yeah, yeah, come in. Yeah, the hoopers. It's like, yeah. snatch, the, snatch that confidence, like, take their confidence, and they have to earn it back. It's like, and you know the ones that do. It's like, when they're able to be like, no, Dave, like, you're wrong. It's like, it's like okay, 
You kind of unshackle right, a little right bit. Of now they get a little bit of the green light to take those, you know, take a little bit deeper three, do X, Y, Z, but it's like. Good shot selection. Yeah, you explained Thank that you to coach. us. Yeah, I know. You explained that to us, and I was like, wow, that's some like evil, evil genius stuff. Evil genius. Yeah, but it works, man. But evil is relative. Yeah, that's a damn fact. It's relative because it seems evil, but the result mm-hmm. is you get ballers. Rings. It, Rings. 13 out of 14. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah, it's, really it's what sports seems. Well, not just, well, when I was in BC, Coach Wally used to always say um, football is a microcosm of life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like sports for the most part, is a microcosm of life. And it's like mentality. Because yep. like, just like you were saying, with well, your confidence and stuff, like, I mean, we, we both know, like, when you have something like you're going through, just the way you think mm-hmm. can affect your whole entire day. Oh, yeah. If you're like, oh, man, it's fine, blah, 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 then it doesn't affect you. Same situation. Mm-hmm. But then another person have the same exact situation and be like, man, it's not going to be fine. It's not going to be this. And then now... Like, you have a horrible day. Oh, yeah. But whereas it's, like, really the situation is the same for both people. Mm -hmm. So it's just crazy how, like, I feel like a lot of times in sports and, like, this coach is realizing, like, it's just the way you think. Oh, It's, like, the way you think. Even just flipping the the word, the, the, what is it, the adjectives or the descriptive words in every sentence. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, the obvious one is glass is half full versus glass is half empty. Right, right. But, like, oh, no, I have to go do this versus... Man, I get to go do this. Man, I go, get, and it's a whole it's different. Boom! That's complete. That's like Inception. Yeah. <laughs> Black, Black Mirror. Black Mirror. You Have go. you seen Black Mirror? I've seen most episodes. Um, Have you watched Bandersnatch? I think so. That's the one where you choose his fate. Like you're watching a oh. movie and on Netflix, and you no, literally use your remote. To- I have not. I have a lot of thoughts about Black Mirror. We can talk about that. I love, yeah. love, love Black Mirror. Black Mirror is. Micah. Like, that is the definition of me because it's like, I love, like, Inception is my favorite movie. Yep. Black Mirror is my favorite, like, TV series. I literally know, like, they have, like, because there's season five, I think, right now. Okay. I know they have some episodes, and I literally wait until they make more episodes so I can binge watch it every right, day. Right, right, right. Like, that's, that's how I feel about Black Mirror, but, like, you're not, gonna like, you're not gonna like my opinion then. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. No, a lot of it's either you love it or you hate it. I actually, I'm actually not on that. I'm in the middle of the spectrum. You're in the middle? Yeah. I'll explain yourself. So, my thinking with Black Mirror is that it's objectively, indisputably well funded, well cast, <laughs> usually well directed, well shot. That's true. Miley in, in, Cyrus. Yeah. yeah like, it's people, like yeah. They, do a, they do a great job, production value, all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Where my issue is, is that at times, it feels a little, and I'm going to reach into my, reach into my um, bag here of movie critic, oh, TV wow. critic, uh, lots of it. It's a little pedantic at times, and sometimes it just, feel, Wait, hold on. it just feels like it's a little bit high on its own supply in that it wants, and it also understands its value to people, is that it's talking about concepts that seem real, like achievable in society if we continue to go this way. This is correct. But they're also trying to make it seem like they're the smartest ones for understanding that. But they also do this thing that I think a lot of art does, that it wants you to, it wants to make the viewer or the person ingesting the art feel like they're the smartest person for, for being able to figure it out with them. So it's like, I'm, we're going to talk about something really crazy, but you're in the secret with me, viewer. So like, nobody else is going to get this because like, you're the smart one and you get it. Whisper, whisper. We're in this together. And so they talk about things that it's like, yes, of course, if in my eyeballs I had the ability to block people like Facebook and all these different things and that could be a punishment, things would go horribly for society. That's great. And you're absolutely right. And the way that you portrayed it on the camera was good and you did a good job of making a television show. But it's not that necessarily impressive of a thought because obviously that's effing crazy. Obviously, if like the government can be like, you did X, Y, Z, and you were, uh, you know, you're, instead of being a red dot in the thing, we're just going to make it so no one can see you and you're a great blob. Yeah, obviously that's going to lead to some horror. Or like the, the craziest one to me is when you can re- rewind every, all your memories. <laughs> that's a crazy story. I'm Absolutely. like, it is, and it's a cool idea, but I'm like, nobody thinks that this is going to go well. Like nobody's sitting there being like, you know what? If I had like a contact lens that I could re- revisit all my memories, like I think that would go really well. I beg to differ. You think so? Because it comes back down to what we just said in the last segment which was glass half empty, glass right. full. Right, Because if I could, re- I immediately thought, I guess what I was thinking, it was like, I know why this w- could be a thing. Yes. It's because, obviously, if murders happen, mm-hmm. if you're going to murder someone, you basically just 
now I'm supposed to just walk right into the prison yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I see that as being like, hey, everyone's keeping everyone accountable, yep. you know, in a sense. And it's like, well, if you're going to murder someone, that's just because you really, 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 really don't want like them. And <laughs> you don't care about yourself. Yeah. Like, both need to be true. Yep. So I can see why that was good. But um, that episode in particular, we're not going to get into it. It's mm-hmm. a little a little crazy. Yeah. But um, would I replay it even though I know what's going on? No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who would ever want to do that to themselves? So it's, I don't know. It, it is, I see your point, because yeah. you're basically saying it's not a, that impressive what they're doing. Well, some, and some of them are. Some of them are pretty breathtaking. There's like, um, what's the one with the young lady who's stuck in this loop, but that's actually her like sentence? The, the, the egg when she becomes like Alexa. Are you talking about that one? No, no, she's stuck. Like, she's, like her, her prison sentence is like being, she's like, and people film her. That's like, and and she's, like, she's in, in the zoo? Like, like yeah, the, exactly. Oh, that, that one, that, that was, was a, that was a twist that, that I was like, oh, that's some good writing. Because no, it wasn't the whole time just being like, here's Facebook, but in our brains, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah obviously Facebook, crazy. like I don't want Zuckerberg anywhere near my life, let alone my brain. So that's obviously that's just going to go bad. But yeah. that one, I'm like, that stuff's, that's fire. That's pretty freaking sweet. Right. It's just that some of them, some of them I'm just like, uh, okay. And also the pig one, the oh. prime minister, that one's, that's actually pretty funny. Okay, that was the first episode. And I literally really? told, I, yeah, that was the first episode oh, first. Funny. I literally told people, I love Black Mirror. And I was like, and my disclaimer is, you might want to skip the first episode. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's really hard for some people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. people will come back to me if I don't say that and be like, what the hell? Is this you? what you watch? Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, he had a good concept. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was wrong. And he, oh my gosh, yeah. that was horrible what yeah. happened. Yeah. But in, they kind of have the same concept happens. There's one with, um, certain, I can't say what he, yeah. the kid with the computer. I'm not sure. I haven't seen all of them. With the so. birthday cake, basically they were extorting him oh, their okay. entire show. And he got deeper and deeper and deeper into it until he had a, um, Basically, I guess he robs, uh, robbed a bank and I don't know, mm. long story short, I don't want to ruin it for people, but I'm like, at this point, that's like season two. Yeah, like, yeah. if you haven't watched yeah, it yet, you haven't watched it, it's on you. We're way past the spoiler alert. Uh, uh, yeah. Spoiler alert, yeah. <laughs> pause the video now. <laughs> so <on> YouTube. <laughs> when he, um, so like, he was watching stuff that he shouldn't have been watching, and then, but he kept on going because there's someone who's like, I'm gonna, you know, kill you and stuff. Oh, gotcha. And then he ended up robbing the bank, and then I think helping someone kill someone, and then they still told everyone at the end of the show. See, like Black Mirror is depressing because of that, because they literally like the worst thing that's gonna happen is going to it's happen. It's gonna happen. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But Which in and of itself is attractive to people. I think sometimes some people like like that. I. It's depressing, but I'm just like, really, I go through the show. Uh, when I go through the show and watch it, I go like, okay, what would I do? Right. That's what I'm doing the entire time. And for that one, I'd be like, just take, cut your losses. They're, mm-hmm. they're going to they're gonna say it anyways. <laughs> just don't go and rob a bank and kill someone. Now you have all these other charges. Like, just go ahead and just do what you need to do. But probably the most interesting one, and one we can probably relate to yeah. the most, was I think the second episode of season one, which is about the... Um, social ratings remember that i think so it's the, it's the lady the lady's the main character and um it's going all good she was working and she had like you have a social rating right and um her social rating was good but she wanted to get like a new apartment but then she's like they're like oh i'm sorry your social rating's only like a 3.8 we only accept 4.5s <laughs> and she's like what but i'm doing good and her whole life just like falls apart Falls apart because yeah. she's trying to go for the rating. She, she it's kind of like the, the it's the whole social corporate. Media thing. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, they were kind of like shooting a shot at the corporate world yeah. of like I gotta be nice to this lady because she can rate. And then like literally one the biggest scene it's in my head is like she's with her boss or supervisor. She's like, oh, how you doing? Good. How you doing? And they're like all smiling. And she's like, oh, you're doing great. And then she's like, all right, have a great day. And she the supervisor go, goes up the elevator and escapes to her or goes to her. And she literally gets her phone out and rates her like a zero. And then, <laughs> and then it gets, gets back to the girl and she gets, gets the ping of like, your, your score has just went down. She's like, so now you know what's happening. Yeah, you know who did it. I was like, if that actually happened in real life, which. Oh, fights would break out. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. Do you, do you remember in high school? Yeah, go ahead. When there was like. What was the, there was a few of them, there was like an anonymous, um, I think it was, I think it was through Facebook, 
But the big thing was like, there was like anonymous chat box, or not even chat box, but like uh, leave a rating type things, literally like that. In like high school, I remember that. Like people would like leave comments on, on people and you go and check. I'm forgetting the name. Oh, this you, was like the- You're not talking about AOL, right? No, but no, it was no, like not, 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 similar not that time, a little bit afterwards. Uh, I might have been too young. I think to it was attached used. to Facebook, to be honest. It was like oh, was one young. of the random pages or widgets or whatever that like- Oh, the widgets. So like people would yeah. go and like, literally like leave a rating on you or be like, oh, Becca is Becca's a B I T C H, and, and because no that, blah, blah, blah. but then like it was all the people in high school, so I'm like, so we'd be like, hey Becca, that was Jessica that wrote that, and they would just blow things up, and it was like, see, I, see, that's 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 when it comes down to like, yeah. now that is, now does this come into like the social weird weirdness? Like, do you do you let everyone know, or yeah. do you keep everything anonymous? Like, mm-hmm. it, what's ethical as oh, a yeah. As a app maker. As an app, yeah, as an app maker. What's ethical? Letting yeah, everyone yeah. know who gave you five star? Or right. letting no one know who gave you a five star? When it comes to, I think it, I mean, that's, that's uh, so ethical. I could, I could go into this one. That's, <laughs> I, that, depends on the, that depends on the subject matter, for sure. <laughs> exactly. But usually ratings, I think, should just be, I think should be anonymous. For should be part. anonymous. Yeah, I think Google's, Google's got it figured out with the Google reviews. If you want to comment and put your words up there, you can have a little face and everyone can know who. But if you're just throwing a star, I, just nah, throw a star, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just, just throw a star. Um, but yeah, the, to finish up the Black Mirror thing, I've been, I've had to accept that I am a um, hater. My roommate calls me, yeah, he calls me a, a movie snob, and he won't, he refuses to watch television or movies with me, which is, I've, I've accepted that it's probably true. Um, watch Banner Snatch and then come sorry, back. Banner Snatch. Go, go on Netflix and watch. I, Snatch. I believe it's still on there. Yeah. Um, it's, it's Black Mirror, uh-huh. Banner Snatch. And the cool thing about Banner Snatch, spoiler alert, well, I, don't, I can't spoil it for you, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know how you can watch um, Black Mirror, you don't have to necessarily watch every episode. Yeah. You know, they're kind of independent. Banner Snatch kind of tells you that it's really not. Oh, it's with all of them? It's, it, no, it, it, it con- it's, uh, they actually connect. Uh... That's, when, that's when Black Mirror got crazy to me, was after Banner, Banner Snatch. Oh, wait, maybe I have seen that then. I think I actually have. Or if... Phil Gold Post. Yeah, no, never mind. Symbol. No. It looks like a field goal post, okay. upside down. Yeah, no, not most. All right. If, yeah. if you didn't know that, then, then <laughs> yeah. you just don't know. But <laughs> Banner Snatch is really, it's, like I said, you choose, like, his faith. Yeah. And um, I definitely chose all the faiths. And, um, it was bad? Does it go bad? It depends on your faith. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that, I was like, there's no way. Oh. It's over? <laughs> think, about how long, think about how long that would take. Like, Filming, I want to say something right now, yeah. but I think we need to go into business to say it. I don't right. want to put it on camera because <laughs> this crazy idea. Like, if we both had like a billion dollars, yes, or money, just I have a guaranteed way of entertainment, and it's going down this route. We'll I'm not check. giving the public this. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, we will talk about this afterwards. And if you end up doing it before I do, it just give me like one percent. There you go. Cool. Yeah, Fair I, enough. I just want to just know I was a part of that idea. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not telling the public because that someone's watching and who has the money to do it. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's fair. You can I call just, us though. You can call us. I, I will tell you. There you go. For equity, for sign, for sign agreements. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, of course. No, I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. I would just. I can't imagine how long it would take to film something like that. Exactly. There's just so many different. No, thank you. I like years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they already take years to make movies yeah. and the yeah. Game of Thrones and stuff, which was crazy. The cream of the crop. I believe we're, this segment is called the cream of the crop because this is vodka from cows who also create cream. All right, here's some free promo vodka. By the way, vodka, if you want more of this, the firework.app. Um, here we go. So superior spirits crafted from pure Canadian milk. Um, vodka creates vodka from the unused milk sugar in the dairy that we already love. So not only are we not creating more waste in the environment because we don't have to extract more milk, we don't have to, we have to create more cows, this is all, you know, let's call it productive runoff or, you know, unused <laughs> things from the dairy we already consume. I create some delicious vodka. I would drink this right now, but I have been told I have to play football tomorrow, so we will not, but <laughs> I... Uh, optional, optional. Yeah, Michael, you said, I think you hinted that you already knew what your answer was gonna be. So I'm gonna kick it to you first. So I think we're supposed to be talking about, for the cream of the crop, the best opposition player we've played against. So I believe for you it'll be an offensive player. Yes. The best offensive player I've ever played against, presumably, and this is no one in the CFL right now, no disrespect, um, 
But it's pretty easy for me because, uh, I mean, he's an NFL MVP, Super Bowl MVP. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes. Right. And I practiced against him many, many times. So I didn't just play against him. It was like five times a week. Right. And um, I got great practice out of it. Yeah. And I picked him off in the spring game my senior year. It's proof. <laughs> yeah. It's out there. The picture's out there. He's throwing it to Jay Samaro. Came across, cover two. He didn't see me. But look at him now. Because that mean, one play, it probably opened his eyes there up. There you go. You and he's like, him. man, that's a great linebacker right there. <laughs> this is how the NFL is going to be. i got to make sure I'm on top of it when I see cover two. <sighs> All right, I'm way better. And all of a sudden, it started going off. Bam. How many years did you play together? Uh, three years. Three. I also played with Baker Mayfield. So, oh, yeah. Um, hey, yep, and yeah. Davis Webb. Yeah. All, all drafted quarterbacks. So yeah. um, definitely didn't, didn't have a um, – I had – Incredible. Yeah. I mean, we, you know how we go, like, um, we have practice, you know, first year, six plays or whatever. Yep. We would start off our practice with seven plays, no huddle, to the point to where, like, they had, like, three ball people, like, putting the ball down to be right fast. after stretch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so, like, anyways, that's my cream of the crop. Cream of the crop. Um, I have actually one last question. I have a follow-up question. Yo, yo. I remember reading an article about, because uh, Cliff was your coach, right? Cliff, I was going to mention, yeah, Cliff's yeah. Yeah. I read an article that for seven on sevens, he would often call only one. That's how air raid you guys were. That he would legit just call four verts over and over and over again because of all the adjustments and stuff. You're right. Why is that true? I think so. I I think there's some truth to that. Yeah. He comes from the Mike Leach. Oh yeah. And yes. I remember when I was a because Mike Leach was never there. Was Coach Tuberville was there when mm -hmm. I was there. But like all the seniors play with Mike Leach, and he would have like six play calls game day like on a piece of paper that's it and that's the air raid thing but like with coach kingsbury they would call really similar plays but i think every play was literally an option yes so like when i was going against deandre washington which was our running back come out the backfield if i have outside leverage i guess he's, he's going inside yep. so that's how it was all the time and that's so super like air raid. formations yeah formations and yeah. ever like give me a hint like two by two and 32 yeah. were the same thing and i'm like just gotta react oh yeah it's super hard yeah I, uh I'm a big Air Raid fan. I've, I read, love I've read too many books. About you, you've read? Oh, yeah. Did, did you read, get the used, Al Mummy book? I used to be a big football nerd. Yeah. yeah Man, yeah. NCAA, yeah. we were just talking about that um, on the bus. I used to, because like growing up, every kid in Texas wanted to go to the University of Texas. Yeah. When I got my scholarship to Tech, and I was like, yep. Red Raider all out, and oh, then yeah. I did the Road to Glory. Yeah. Like, oh man, and then all I would do is just hold on to Triangle, because that's <laughs> no huddle, and just no huddle going against Oregon, Alabama. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Just checking the box. Like I yeah. knew how to be offense corner. Like, all right, you got one linebacker in the box. I'm gonna run the ball. Yep. You got three linebackers in the box. I'm gonna pass it. Yep. That's literally all I did. Football's easy. Yeah. Football's it's football's simple. Yeah. It's simple without a doubt. Yep. Okay, my turn. Yep. Um, I'm actually I actually don't know who the best defensive player. I think. Um, one of them I actually played with, but I just saw him do certain freaky stuff. Um, and that's J.C. Sherritt, mm. former, Mike, former, former linebacker um, in Edmonton. He was pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, like him and Mondo in terms of defensive players, I just saw all the time just what they would do. Um, and then also, it's kind of a duo, but when it was Singleton and Thurman at, in Calgary uh -huh. together, I just think that they played so well together, like Thurman just huh. being like that hit stick and Alex just running all running over the damn place. Yeah. Um, it's kind of hard for me because like, you know, I've spent a lot of time out wide. It's, you don't always get the same, the same feel. And I think every DB sucks, to be honest. So it's like, I'm not really going to pick yeah, a DB. No, I'm no. not going to pick a DB. Yeah, that's good. So it's like, I feel like... I love that confidence. Yeah, I feel like uh, the two of them, I remember always being like, yeah, they're just... Because Alex would just got free reign to do whatever the hell he wanted. Yeah. And Jameer was just like... Thumper. Yeah. You're thumper. right. You're yeah. right. And they, that's why they both went they to NFL. And they played so well together. And shoot, yeah. Alex is, I think, last captain. year, he's a captain first yeah. off, which is amazing. Yeah. When I saw that, I was just like, man, like, great for him. Mm -hmm. Because, like, to, to do that on, you know, all these, all these levels, he probably was a captain in college, yeah. I assume. But then, um, you know, him even being, like, I remember watching him in 2020, he was like, PFF 22, like the 22 highest linebacker. That's awesome. And I'm just like, man, they're doing great. And Thurman, mm -hmm. he's great too. He's yeah. still great. You yeah. know, he's still a great player. Sweet. Yep. We did it. Cream of the Crop presented by Fodcow Dairy Distillery. Fodcow. Made from the also valuable sugar, not runoff, 
the sugary, I shouldn't say discharge either. I definitely shouldn't say that. <laughs> Let's call it the milk permeate, the unused milk sugar. The, the um, cow sugar. From, cow from sugar. beautiful Ontario dairy farms. Yep. Gotta love our cows. Unless they are the cows that tip over and burn Chicago to the ground. We don't. Uh, we don't do that. We don't want those cows. Cow tipping is a thing. No, I don't think don't that's a thing in Ontario. That's probably a thing in Texas. <laughs> Because there's not a whole lot else to do. I've in seen the, people attempt to do it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's I, dangerous. Don't do it. I, I imagine with all that wide open space and no place. It's to not go. water, by the way, even though it does hydrate you. It could probably go into a Gatorade bottle, though. You know, um, keep Just high away from children. If anybody probably. sees <laughs> Josh, Joshua O'Connor with a Gatorade bottle on game day, um, <laughs> smell it and check it because it might be uh, vodka. And 40%. There we go. Really? 40%. That's wow, my first thing. Wow, it's legitimate, name. full 40%. I love science. So, um, Vodka. That's great. We can Vodka. talk. Yeah, we can talk. I'm, uh, I'm not really like farm aesthetic, if you're trying to find people to represent your brand perfectly. But I, will, <laughs> I, I do enjoy vodka. Some vodka, some rocks, some soda, a lime. We can talk. Let me know. Fortunately, I do not drink, but <laughs> if you need a model, there you go. <laughs> I'll act like I'm drinking it. You can put water in here That's for all we know, could, but they won't could. know that. So um, I'm also available. And, um, less I do, available, though. Yeah, yeah. More I mean, available, less more available. Exactly. More. You do have to <laughs> use more available. You are from Texas, though, so you got a little more in the country, like, you know, country Yeah, I can, I can be right next to a cow. That's what, that's Take what a picture I'm saying. Yeah, it would, it would be natural. Now. I'd probably yeah. be terrified next to a cow. Those things are big as hell, and they smell. They are, they are big. And they smell. They I'm not do. a big, I'm not great with farms. I've been on farms. I've been on farms. One of my best I'm, friends lives on a farm now, and it's like, they have pretty horses and stuff, and I'm like, eh, I just kind of I just do, smells. okay, one of my weird things is um, I do want a Clydesdale one day, a couple of Clydesdales. Those I mean, are, that's a flex. Exactly. That's yeah, like the biggest flex. Ever I since have. I saw them at SeaWorld, yeah. I'm like, these are dinosaurs. Wait, at SeaWorld? Yeah, so like SeaWorld, because the uh, it's a what, Budweiser, or what's it? What's the... I What's thought the, the SeaWorld was pretending to be the Is it Budweiser? Ocean. So, like, there's a Budweiser wagon at SeaWorld, and they had a Clydesdale, and it's the first time I seen this dinosaur upon my eyes. And I'm like, your knees yeah, yeah, are yeah. above me. They're big as hell. Granted, I was, like, you know, 5'2 at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but still, like, to this day, I've never ridden a horse before. So this comes from a person who doesn't right. know how to ride a horse. Actually, I might be more, I've, I've ridden a horse. I might be more country than you. Let's go. Let's I'll take go. it. I was I'll terrified. Take it. <laughs> I was terrified. A Clydesdale. That's pretty. That's pretty badass. Yeah. All right. Well, actually, Mike, I want one one more thing. I just want just let's just make it very very clear. Okay. Because hopefully, the PA announcer is watching this. The P who? The PA announcer. Oh my. How gosh. do you pronounce your name? Wow. No. First off, I need a history. I need a history <laughs> behind it. It was going well in the beginning of the season. There was no problem. Did someone talk to him? Who Maybe is he? He I might have started drinking too much vodka out there. Someone talked to him. It's, it's like someone talked to him. It's like someone came to me like, you know you're not saying his name right. And someone like, someone like... Sabotage. Sabotage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, but it is um, Micah Alway. And really, if you want to do it the Nigerian way, mm-hmm. if you have that, it's Micah Awe. 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 Yeah. But Awe... It's been like that since like elementary school. We're gonna keep it that way. It's marketable, more marketable. I have to. Yeah, agree. so um, Micah Alway, not Mika. Oh. And we do know how, uh, <laughs> how Westerners struggle to pronounce anything that doesn't just, yes. it's not Jessica or Brad, so. And at the, at the very least, all oh, would be like, I understand that. Right. I understand where you got that from. Oh, oh. oh. that's kind of yeah, Everyone always does that, yeah. but it's always, like yeah. always, Absolutely. always. But one of my you. least favorite things on earth is when people mispronounce names because it's so easy. Because all you have to do is just have the the moment of humility to say, "Hey, what's your name?" I don't know how to pronounce this. That's true. It's just it's it's breathtaking to me. That's no true. Love, I, uh, it's like effort. Yeah, it's that's like it. Effort. Like we we hired interns and and um, two of them had you know, objectively complex names to pronounce just because they don't, they're not phonetically the way they're written. They don't sound the way they're written. And like, I had people on my team like mispronounce their names and I had to scream at them. I was like, take the grow time. Grow up. Take the and time. And just say that you don't know how to pronounce something. Like, it's not hard. Yeah, take the time. Take the time. Well, with that. Oh yeah, so in this <laughs> week's predictions, <laughs> this week's um, CFL predictions, probably Nate 
a whole, a whole layer. I don't even know. They're probably going to say we're all going to lose again, as they do every week. So they say um, every team's going to lose every week, I think. Yeah, so it's like you're just going to run the table. So, um, so speaking in the future, haha, we won. There we go. So I like that. That's, that's my prediction for the week. Yeah, I can't okay. wait to do that one day. TSN, if y'all need player predictions, which I think they should do. I mean, they couldn't, they, they're only gonna objectively be better than the predictions that they have because I think there's one person with a winning record on the CF, and then, hey, I'm all for content. I'm all for people going out there and having to put stuff out. Totally get it. Content team, CFL, love you all to death. Um, but it is objectively funny when you dub something the expert picks and the experts are all under 500. We should do It's a, sort of the antithesis of what an expert is supposed to be. We should do a, an anonymous Predictions That's an from, anonymous from, predictions from a player with social ratings, right? Black, Black Mirror. Mirror. Oh, Boom. oh, end it. And that is that. <laughs> that was awesome. That was good. <laughs> You're giving me. Remember. Don't